Well, Jim, um, we'll move on to 1970, America's Cup. I um, hope you don't mind me bringing that up. But no. uh, it was a, a bittersweet time for you, I guess. Um, firstly, to be named Helmsman of Gradle Two, and then a, a wonderful challenge, but uh, things didn't go quite our way. Tell us about that campaign. Well, we had a wonderful over 12 months trialling off the Sydney Heads. First with uh, Martin Visser, and then after a considerable time, uh, I got excused for a while, and Peter Cole was put up against Martin Visser. And it uh, wasn't long before I was back against Martin Visser again. So this was Gretel 2 against Gretel 1? Uh, 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 no, this is Gretel against Vim. Vim, Vim, Vim okay. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, so yep. Frank's two yachts. Yep. He first chartered Vim, but then he finished up purchasing Vim. Beautiful, Owen mm. Stevens, mm. 1939, 12 metre. Yeah, well, so we finally come and Sir Frank Packer names... Jim Hardy as the skipper, and Martin Visser as his offside sort of thing. But the biggest trouble, Pete, was that the crew got mixed up. And the foredeck that I had, which had really outsailed Martin Visser's foredeck crew, quite sort of decisively, three blokes against three blokes, finished up with only one of my blokes, Ron Prescott, a number one forward hand, and two of Martin's boys. Well, well Ron Prescott, a pretty sensitive sort of guy, beautiful Flying Dutchman crewman and a speed skiing champion and whatever. He just literally couldn't handle the situation mm. and basically said he's going to step off the yacht. Well, I didn't want him to step off the yacht at all. And uh, so uh, I brought him back onto the coffee grinders and uh, that meant Doc Greenaway's now on the dock. It's sort of uh, that sort of thing doesn't, doesn't work too well. Mm. And then on top of that, Pete, the first race in the America's Cup, we got past the French, which was good, uh, France won, but then the first race against Intrepid, the redesigned Intrepid, was a windy day and honestly, part of the crew got seasick on the way out. One of them was John Bertrand. We were being towed out by uh, Briggs Cunningham and Lodus the chaperone, beautiful big 50, 60 foot diesel powered uh, tow boat. Well, that's fine, except we'd been being towed by by Trig Halverson's uh, offsider with petrol engines, and the exhaust, the fumes, the fumes from the chaperone was uh, pretty ordinary, and I reckon that contributed to the to the actual uh, demise of that first race. But the interesting thing was, Pete, that. In the five minute period, we had we had intrepid point blank port and starboard at right angles. And uh, and I didn't cut him in half, I attacked him, <laughs> but put a flag up on him. And after the race, I love this, I said to Sir Frank Packer on the VHF that Sir Frank, I'm protesting the New York Yacht Club, an incident at the start of the race. And uh, this was after one of my crew off the foredeck, he got off the boat at the wing mark, took me six minutes to pick him up, and that's exactly the amount we lost by. Anyway, I said to Sir Frank, we're protesting the New York Yacht Club. He came back on the VHF. With the, anybody on that frequency would have heard him. He, he, said, oh, he said, Jim, protesting the New York Yacht Club is like complaining to your mother-in-law about your wife. Well, that was Sir Frank. <laughs> he was a classic. He, he really was. He, he had this bit of humour underneath it all. Kerry, one of his sons, he never had that humour. Mm. Kerry was quite sullen. Clyde, the older brother, he, he, he had more of Sir Frank's humour. Mm. 
but it was a, a marvellous learning curve, the whole thing. But it was really sad that when we did win a race and got blown out on a starting incident. And uh, a funny thing, isn't it, that after that first race, I went to Sir Frank Packer because the New York Yacht Club said, we Australians knew nothing about the rules and all of this sort of stuff. Well, we were, we were actually listening to rules experts here and the rule book said there was no proper course before the start. And so basically our bloke experts here were saying, well, you go where you like, you know, mm. as long as you give the other fellow room to miss you. Well, <laughs> he, did, he didn't give me room. He, he, he reckoned I, you know, balked him. And uh, the Americans have a rule that uh, oh, if you get to within two boat lengths, you must hold your course, be steady. We we'll said, well, show us where that is in the rule book. It's not in the rule book. Mm. But that's the way the Americans interpreted. And fair enough if everybody's doing it that way. But uh, they're doing it their way and we're doing it our way. Mm. And so I went to Sir Frank Packer and I said, look, Sir Frank, it might be best if, if I asked Martin Visser to start the boat. And, uh, and Sir Frank said, you feel that, do you, Jim? I said, well, he, he's more aggressive than me, but I'm a bit scared about him on the starting area. Yeah, well, if you feel that way, I'm only going to wait. I'm only going to give you a couple more chances anyway. I said, OK. So I said to Martin Visser, and I told Martin, I said, Martin, I'm worried about one thing, that you could get us blown out on the starting line. I should never have said it. I should have kept that under my hat. And the other bloke, I said the same thing, Paul Salmon. When I chose him over Ron Prescott, I said, Paul, look, you got off the boat once on Sydney Harbour. <laughs> you fell off and I says, you know, you've got, you've got the form. I, uh, sure enough, I, I should never have said that because he got fell off the boat. <laughs> anyway, anyway. It's Careful what you wish for, isn't it? Yeah. It is, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it is. But that, that really obviously gave you a taste for America's Cup, that 1970 series. I think, oh, yeah. I think all Australia realised then that it, it was winnable, but it was very hard to win. But That's someday right. down the track we might get there. But we'll come to that in a moment. But um, So that was 70. Then 73... Um, you joined Bondi aboard Apollo 2 for the Admiral's Cup That's in Cow's right. Isle of Wight with Ginkgo and Ragamuffin. That's right. And uh, <coughs> the Germans won that series, but yeah, Australia Siddhar. was second. Sadati was the top boat, yeah. And it's a sister ship of Love and War. Love and War, yeah. Love and War's got a bit more sail area, but yes, yeah, Sadati. But uh, tell us about that series. It was windy to start with and a very light, fast net race. That, that's, that's, yeah. that's quite right. Yeah. And yeah. it was wonderful racing we had here in the selection trials yeah. because there was Ginkgo, uh, Bob Miller design timber boat, and there's Apollo 2, exactly the same design but aluminium. Mm. And it was Mawson, House, Mawson Gowlin and... Howison, what, HMG. Anyway, yeah. HMG. Yeah. Uh, it was basically a trial run to build the boat to Lloyd Scantlings, which they will build the 12 metres later to become Southern Cross mm. out of aluminium. And it was the first and, in, and courageous, the American boat, first two aluminium 12 metres. Mm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the, the, the star studded Australian team, I mean, you had yourself, uh, David Forbes was there, John Bertrand. Uh, Bob Miller sailed, or Benny as he was there. Well, That's he, right. Whatever, he was on Ginkgo. And yep. Richard Hammond was there. Yep. You had Ron Packer on Apollo. And yeah. Sid, of course, with the ragamuffin as his third challenge for the Admiral's Cup. It was a pretty strong team. My word, yeah. my word it was. Yeah. In fact, you know, we, we all got becalmed uh, coming around the lizard. You could see, you could almost see where, where they played bowls there. <laughs> Plymouth, Plymouth yes. but we're becalmed, and, yeah. and no wonder, yeah. no wonder that old codger said, "Oh, look, I'll finish this game of bowls because the Spanish Armada were no quicker than the than the Apollo Two, no. and we sort of didn't they? The boats came in on the 
every six hours, a group tide. of boats that come on in the on the tide. Yeah, well, that, that gave you a taste of the Admiral's Cup. But the next year, 74, um, as you mentioned, Southern Cross, yeah. America's Cup again. Yeah. And um, I think I'm correct in saying that both you and John Cuneo were co-skippers or at that yeah, well, for that challenge? Well, what, what, what happened there, Pete? Uh, Bondi, Alan rang me and said, look, could I come over to Yanchep? Uh, this was early in 74, in the, about February, February uh, 74, and take over Gretel 2 off Yanchep in uh, trials against John Cuneo in the new aluminium yacht. And uh, I accepted, and over I went and lived at, uh, at Yanchep, and we sailed, we sailed, and we were, had an edge on Southern Cross more often than not. Okay, so then we go all get to America and uh, John Cuneo, his history, he's had a lot of crew over a lot of years. A lot of people have sailed with him. But when you look at it, not for very long. <laughs> and that's telling you something. And of course, as you'd know, Peter, in the America's Cup, the crew getting along is, is probably as important as the stitching in the in the seams of the sails. Mm. I mean, it is super important, especially over a long period, that that everybody you know, is, is, if not facing the same direction all the time, not far off it, mm. until the finish, like '83, everybody and you know, eight of the eleven had been with me before in Southern in. Uh, Australia too, and they're people that have a proven track record, mm. don't they? Mm. And uh, yeah, so it finished up, and in fact, the late Bob Fisher and the late Tom Blackheller took, made a bet with me in the Black Pearl restaurant. He said, you'll get the job, Jim, believe me. John Cuneo won't, you'll get the job. I said, oh, and I've bet a box of wine, <laughs> well, Fisher finally got the box, but Tom Blackaller di died before I could give him the <laughs> box of wine. Yeah. But it was, uh, I'll tell you the high water mark of that whole thing though, Peter, was poor old Huey Trahan, who was my tactician in race one in Southern Cross, and the most observant yachtsman and just a brilliant yachtsman and a butte mate, etc. Bondi kicks him off the boat. And Cuneo, John's invited to come on as my 2IC. And I thought, well, look, I've had, you know, it felt like 20 years racing against this tyrant almost. <laughs> well, Cuneo, he turned out to be the most subordinate, the most helpful, the most reliable. <laughs> I mean, whatever word you like to put is entirely different to what I was expecting. And I, I think one comment that really blew me away, we're racing, on the second race or whatever it was, side by side with Courageous. We'd got away with a nice even start and we're hanging on for a while, hanging on. And, and then, and then uh, I think Jack Baxter, the navigator, he said, oh, he said, he, I think he's going a little higher and a little faster. Oh. You love to hear that. I said, <laughs> I said, I said, and I said, Coons, I said, I can't make this thing go any faster. He said, Jim, if you can't, nobody can. You know, and for a skipper, mm. he said, where, where, where did that comment come from, from John Cuneo? I mean, it just blew me clean out of the water. Yeah. So... Well, there you go. But she was a super boat courageous, wasn't she? You're really up yeah. super competition there. And they finished up poor old Ted Turner when they bought it. He, he weighs it. <laughs> oh, it's a couple of thousand pounds too light. Yeah. Push it down in the water. No, but then, no, but then, uh, the, you know, you've got to cut the sailboat down. Yeah. Poor old Turner had to cut the boat in half and yeah. put a bit more boat in. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, I'm right in saying, didn't Bondi do one of the races in 74? Oh, yeah. He jumped we, on board. We were leading too. Yes. <clears throat> he was on the grinders, wasn't he? Yeah, he was <laughs> on the grinder, and all under deck. Yes. And, uh, 
and uh, oh yeah, and uh, no, we 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 crossed ahead, and we I think we've finished up overstanding a wee bit, whatever windward mark, and but uh, but there were people coming into the crew, like Huey Trahan. He's not in he's not in the next series, but he's in the one we won. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, quickly, Bondi, a real character. Oh, well, you you knew him. Yeah. I mean, you're with Alan Bond, Pete, and honestly, after the first 30 seconds almost, you're going, <laughs> where have I been all this time? His enthusiasm, his enthusiasm Extraordinary. was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't realise in 74 how, how close to the wind he was going. He was running on empty. Yeah. And... and I don't know if you knew, but remember Newty Roberts, yeah. Newton Roberts, he won the lottery in yeah. Newport. And you know, it was ex plenty of money. Yeah. And Bondi said, oh, oh, Newty, can you <laughs> lend me that money you've just won so I can feed the crew, yeah. basically. Yeah. And Newty said, well, you know, I want a bit of interest with it. <laughs> yeah. And he did, and I asked Newty later, he eventually paid him back with a bit of interest yeah. But but I mean you didn't realise Bondi was that close to yeah, the win. Yeah. Well, we, we'll jump back to Admirals Cup in '77. Uh, you decided you'd build your own little boat, yep. and uh, you went to a local designer, Alan Blackburn. How did that all come about for you? Well, I felt all along that the Admirals Cup should have at least one Australian designer. I, I felt quite quite strongly about that, that that it should encourage, you know, part of the rule. And I think Mercedes and, you know, the earlier Admirals Cup teams were doing that, but now they've got into sort of overseas designs. And uh, so that's why I, I literally uh, went for this guy who was a qualified naval architect, Alan Blackburn, and he was designing lots of boats for Adelaide Boat Builder. Just forget his name at the moment. John Duncanson, wasn't it? Duncanson mm. boats, mm. and so he he designed the Runaway, and uh, as you remember, she really enjoyed when there was no wind and no waves. She was quite fast, <laughs> but she didn't like <laughs> wind and waves together. <laughs> and wind on the beam, uh, nobody could catch us. As a rocket ship. Up and down this coast. Yeah. A couple of the trial races, uh, you know, we, we looked a bit of a glamour. But do you realise that last race, we had to come from Newcastle or something down around the boy in Botany Bay and back fresh nor'easter and tossed at Mark Tostevin. I don't, did I mention he died recently? Yes, you had yeah, told me that, but yes. Yeah. But, but uh, if you remember, we, we came down, running down, fair way off the coast and Mark Tosfin taking bearings and taking bearings and we could see we were I think more current anyway we're doing we're doing well and, and then the crew started getting you remember pretty touchy that we're going too far we Mark said well, jibe now you're only going to Little Bay or whatever uh, oh look Mark best we best we take the risk. Well, we did, we, we jibed a bit early and got in, but we were ahead of our, and when we got round the mark and got back on the breeze, I, I remember saying, <clears throat> hey, Freddie, Neil, a good mate, and I you know, built a cadet dinghy for him. So we're really, we're really mates, and he's a very good strong wind skipper. And I said, hey, Fred, you take this, you know. And so Fred steered the boat, I didn't realise up on the on the cliff at Bondi or wherever it was, Trig Halverson, um, the Pe selectors, Trig Peter Halverson, Green, Peter Green, I think, was um, it? what's his name, Bill Fesk, and probably Tony Mooney or somebody. Anyway, selectors are up there, and Fred sails the boat pretty well, and we we get home and didn't think that much. I think we got a second place or something. You know, I think Sid Fisher's ragamuffin or something. Anyway, we get chosen 
and those couple of, uh, you know, Scotty Kaufman's boats, and we beat them. And so, uh, no, that, and having you on board, Pete, and the Love and War crew was just uh, wonderful. Yeah. Well, so sad that Tostevin and co, we didn't follow Ted Turner and go to the sort of eastern side of the course to the fast net. You know, it was a flat calm. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> basically, and we're still becalmed. And these blokes that go, and Turner and Lightning, wasn't it? He, yeah. He crossed the sort yeah. of rum line. He said, oh, I don't like it down here. Across the, and up there with Eclipse and some of the others. Because the, the wind and would have suited run away, but we were in the wrong part of the <laughs> Irish Sea. <laughs> but quick, quickly tell us a, a Peter Kurt story about the uh, the crew on Runaway. Oh, Peter Kurtz. <laughs> well, the 70, 76 Hobart race, I sailed with uh, Sid Fisher in the Ragamuffin. And uh, and then the uh, uh, dinner part of meal we had in the, in the ball and chain restaurant or something, Constitution, whatever. Dock or wherever it was in Hobart. Anyway, it's about midnight, I think, on New Year's Eve or something. And Peter Kurtz, we'd all had, you know, some nice wines, etc. But Peter Kurtz came up to me and said, "You've stolen, stolen all my crew, Love and War crew." I said, "Peter, I haven't stolen the crew. No, they've they've told me that you're not going to try Love and War in the '77." Admiral's Cup trials, and, and they, they've joined me. And Peter Kurt said, well, I hope all your fowls die. About midnight, I, I said, oh, geez, that's not very happy. Well, at the end of the trials, the first phone call I received being chosen in the team was from Peter Kurtz. I, honestly, I think I, I, I received the message from the CYC that I'm one of the three boats, and... and uh, <laughs> And I put the phone down, it rings again, Peter Kurtz. Jim, I hope all your fowls don't die. First words I'd said for about two months to Peter Kurtz. And look, if there's anything I can help you with, I've got, look, I've got all these charts and I've got this and I've got that. And uh, I said, oh, thanks very much, Pete. Well, I said to Mark Tosterman that Peter's off and Mark said, Jim, charts, leave that to me. I'm not taking any second-hand <laughs> charts. I said, OK, Mark, OK, OK. Anyway, anyway uh, that, was, that was what happened. Yeah, great character. But j just quickly finishing up on 77, um, you invited Max Whitnell to join the crew. Oh, yeah. He, he, old, he, he, he invited himself, to yeah, be well, honest. Poor old Max. He gets seasick going to Manly, and he, oh. he just was terrified of going to Fastnet, but it turned out the quietest Fastnet almost on record. It was flat as the table, wasn't it, the whole trip there exactly, about? Yeah. Exactly. So he, but remember the Channel race, <laughs> and we did pretty well in the Channel we did. race. We did. And anyway, but Max got sick when we lost sight of cows and the crew was so tough on him particularly John Harris Akers put a bloody sign on the bucket the buckets the buckets tied to Max's hand he's on that boat spewing into the bucket and the blokes had to write down what colour they thought he'd, he'd gone from pink to grey to green Oh. oh dear, dear old Max. Yeah, so that was uh, seventy-seven. But, do, but one thing in seventy-seven. Do you remember that that race uh, in the Solent, and we're standing in towards Limington, and Mac and uh, and uh, what's his name, uh, the navigator, Mark Tosterman. He said, Jim. Now, when I tell you to tack, we've got to tack the boat. I said, okay. And we get standing in, and I can see down to Lourdes was. Superstar, John Bertrand and uh, Sadi Hammond navigating and, and the South American beautiful Freya's two-tonner, I think. And, and, uh, and, and uh, Tostevin says, tack the boat. I said, but the other two boats are down to Lourdes. Tack the boat. And I said, OK, Mark, geez, tack the boat. He said, if they touch, they won't get off. He said, it dries up, dries out. And sure enough, Superstar, <laughs> 
six hours later, they, they, they get it floated again. Well, the, the race was abandoned because it ran out of wind, but Superstar, as you say, was high and dry. They walked to a farmhouse <laughs> to get some provisions while the boat was still on the bricks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Cows and Admiral's yeah. Cubs. Yeah, <laughs> you're a dear. Good stories, yeah. <laughs>